Today, we are going to look at two Marantz amplifiers. One is very old. That's my Model 1120 integrated from the 70s. And one is not so old, but uh, it's getting there. That's the SR9600 7.1 channel surround receiver. The SR9600 is quite frankly a fucking unit tipping the scales at 26 kilos, which if you're American and want to know what that is in pounds, like double it and add five, pretty sure. By comparison, the 1120 weighs only 12 kilos, so it's very skinny, very skinny by comparison. Back in the early 2000s when the SR9600 was new, it was hideously expensive, costing over 4,000 American dollars. Obviously, by today's standards, it's so outdated in its ability to function as a surround receiver. It's not even funny, but I'm sure back in the DVD and CRT frontier that I was sort of too young to live through, um, it would have been the daddy. And it was the daddy, actually, of Marantz's receiver tree. This was it. This was Nirvana when it came to surround from Marantz. In terms of design, I think both amps are actually quite handsome. Obviously, the 1120 has more of those vintage styling cues with the brushed metal faceplate and the very satisfying knobs and buttons. But there's something about the SR9600 just fucking sitting there, being massive, huge hunk of Japanese steel or aluminium, or I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's just there, being huge. And I kind of like that about it too. If I had to put one in my living room purely from a style perspective, it would be the 1120. I think it's just a little bit more stylish than the SR9600. So what about how they sound? How do they compare to one another? I mean, it should be a no-brainer, right? The 1120 is a dedicated stereo amp, and if you've spent any time on a forum, you will know that stereo amps are always better than AV receivers. So I spent a bit of time listening to both amps on my Vandersteen 2CEs, as well as my Kef Reference Series Model 1s. They were being fed Apple Music lossless through my topping D50S DAC. So I listened to a couple tracks over the course of the listening party and I kicked it off with What a Shame by Patricia Barber. I thought the 9600 had slightly less control over the bass. It was a bit slower, but the 1120 lacked a bit of texture and detail when it came to that particular recording. And the guitar solo sounded a lot more vivid and more present in the mix on the 9600 compared to the 1120. Then I listened to Fever by Michael Buble and both amps did an excellent job rendering the double bass um, very tight and controlled on both amps. Uh, The 9600 handled the brass flourishes a bit better, like the dynamic swings. Then I listened to a new song from Angel Olsen called Ghost On and this sounded hands down better on the 1120 and it presented the drums with a bit more musicality and heft behind them. Um, Perhaps not as clean or as detailed as the 9600 but just more musical and to me more enjoyable. Finally I listened to Cool Down the Pace by Gregory Isaacs and on the 9600 I felt as though it was a bit sterile, a bit confined sounding. It wasn't as wide as I'm used to hearing it, and it just was lacking a bit of body and soul. Whereas the 1120 did a better job with this track. The drums, again, were a bit more present and just a more enjoyable tone than the 9600. Overall, I definitely think the 9600 is a cleaner amp. The 1120 has some coloration in its mid-range, I think, which stops it from separating instruments as well as the 9600 does. But I like it more 
the 9600 lacks a bit of body. It's like it's all there, but it's just lacking that sort of musicality that the 1120 has in spades, even though it's not as accurate. So if you like the cleaner sound, but like worse, go for the 9600. Otherwise, 1120 all day. It's a s sweet sounding amp. I couldn't compare phono stages because the 9600 doesn't have one, but I did listen to one track on the 1120 through its phono stage. Uh, American Smile by Jack Ladder from his latest album, Hijack. I wasn't impressed, but that's probably because my turntable setup's a bit shit. Rather than the fault lying with the phono stage in the amp, so I just ignored it. That's the end of my first YouTube review, and if you liked it, subscribe. It'll motivate me to make some more, and see how it goes. <laughs> Ciao.